On today's show, a big buck field of dreams might best describe a Minnesota farm called Zumbro Whitetails, where range the bone collector. Bone who? Well, it might be the largest whitetail ever in captivity. Thanks to a high-tech aid, some military veterans are able to return to the pheasant hunting fields. We'll tag along. Later, the secrets of a Minnesota dog trainer, Jason Domeyer. Why dogs listen to him and not you. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week enjoys the changing seasons in Ely, Minnesota, on the edge of the Boundary Waters. Bring a jacket. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. Up first, a story that has infatuated us for centuries. It's all about big deer wearing big antlers. And the best place to see those in Minnesota right now is a place called Zumbro Whitetails. <laughs> Old MacDonald never had a farm like this. A field of dreams for deer hunters everywhere. We started in 1998, just a passion for hunting and being around whitetails. No better idea than to try to get out and uh, get close to them. We started with a few and then found out that there was uh, an opportunity to make some money doing it. So began Steve Doherty's own dream. Zumbro River Whitetails, a 30-acre farmstead home to more than 100 deer, plus about 60 fawns. How do you keep them down on the farm? So how tall are these fences here? Oh, they're 8 feet or 96 inches. That's what the minimum requirement is. Can a deer go over 8 feet? We've never had one go over. You know, we separate them by age and uh, genetics. One thing we uh, try to do is keep our bucks away from our does, especially in the fall. We are considered uh, livestock. Basically, it's no different than cattle farming or anything else. You gotta take care of them. Take care of them means daily farm chores. Oh, aren't they cute? And they're kind of happy to see us. How old are these, Steve? They're born in May. You're about ready to get the boing, I'm out of here. <laughs> you thought you were a coyote. What's the next step for these guys? Move out to a pasture later when they don't need bottles? I got about another week about being bottle fed, then I'll be going out. Bottle feeding? <laughs> Who's going to come up, huh? Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're pulling hard. Yeah, this is good stuff, huh? Cross armed here. Boy, I didn't realize they tug so hard. How often do you have to do this? Once a day, huh? You guys are pros at this. Look at those tails wagging, they're happy. You about done? Huh? Almost. Mama's out of milk. <laughs> Hard to believe these dainty fawns will just in a few months grow up to be mama deer or... If his daddy is this giant buck, will he end up with a giant antler too? Yep. Giant antlers? Oh yes, that's another crop on this farm. A crop that brings in, pardon the pun, the big bucks. This is a group of two-year-olds. They got a lot of growing left to do yet, but they're getting about halfway done. Bone Collector, yeah. A couple of these bigger ones are some of his offspring. Bone Collector? Okay, who's this Bone Collector buck? So he's the prize bull, so to speak, huh? Yep. This is our main breeder buck. His name is Bone Collector XL. This seemed like the right name because he had a lot of, a lot of antlers on his head. He's a five-year-old this year, and you know he's going to end up being one of the largest white-tailed deer ever raised. It's pretty much luck. It might never happen again. You can never duplicate them, or they wouldn't. There would be no market for them. That is something else. Whoa. I wonder what those antlers weigh. He's probably a close to a 400-pound deer. Wow. An incredible animal. So do I dare ask, if I had my checkbook here, what would I have to write to buy him? It'd be somewhere in that $250,000 range. <laughs> wow. 
it's high priced venison. His offsprings that go to the hunting branches, you know, they bring upwards of anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Most of those bucks out there are gonna bring that anywhere from probably seven to ten thousand dollar range. What happens to the other deer? Those without giant antlers? We offer hunting stock for hunting ranches. We do a lot of breeding. We do a lot of um, meat sales as far as, you know, for venison market. Biggest thing is the breeding as far as the passing on our genetics on to other farms. Steve's passion for deer farming has its roots in his passion for deer hunting. And with the amount of time I spent bow hunting, I've actually gained more respect for him. You realize what it takes for him to survive in the wild. A lot of things have to happen for it to get there. Biggest thing is uh, I don't get buck fever like I used to. <laughs> in recent years, deer farms in the Midwest have been suspected of spreading diseases, such as one called CWD, to wild deer. Doherty says it's not happening on his watch. Every animal that leaves this farm at some point will be tested for CWD. Uh, we TB test and brucellosis test. We are a fully accredited herd. Basically, it's an air gun that we use for uh, darting animals, for medicating. We're the most regulated industry of any livestock. I don't mind the testing because then I know what I've got. We're selling a nice, healthy product and we have no issues. In the meantime, Bone Collector maintains his regal pose down on the farm, his head ornament the best there is. So when autumn comes and the rut begins, Bone Collector, as well as the other deer, may already know who will win the mating game. When we return, we go afield with veterans who never thought they'd ever, ever hunt pheasants again. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Connecticut. Rapala Ice Force and by Grand Rapids Tourism. Welcome back. As we've learned in America, we owe our military veterans a great debt. And one way to repay that debt is to get them involved in the outdoors. So coming up is a story about veterans on a waterfowl hunt. We tagged along. Thank you, Daddy. Come on this way. His name is Roger. Last name, Illies. Title, Vietnam Vet. Missed it. Missed? Missed doesn't count. What counts is Roger is hunting again. And so is Randy Faulkner. Well, it went pretty good for the pheasants. It didn't go so good for me. They were so high, they just fly so high. I think they found out I was a good shot because they only go that way and that way. And I, some, somebody must have told them. <laughs> What's happening here near Avon, Minnesota is, well, payback. An appreciation payback to 20 disabled veterans who, in this case, once enjoyed hunting and thought they'd never hunt again. Here we go, right on top of us, right on top. Next station. Welcome to Sandpine Pheasants. Well, we're doing a European hunt here, and the king would take out his royalty on a pheasant hunt, and they didn't want to walk a lot, so the pheasants would release the pheasants out of the middle of the woods. So today we're treating these veterans as kings and royalty. We have 10 shooting stations surrounding our woods, and we have two veterans at each of the 10 shooting stations, 20 total. We have a, a veteran, Lawrence, from World War II. He was a POW for uh, a little over two years you know, a German prison camp, and it's really cool. He's a fun guy to have out here. But there's another story rolling out here in the field. It's about innovation, invention, and compassion. This event is uh, pretty special to all of us because there, if there's, there's two things that we're really passionate about, and one of them is obviously our veterans. And these guys have gone out and literally risked life and limb for our country. And so what we're doing with the Action Track Chair is trying to get these guys back out there and get these chairs in their hands so that they can go back out and do the things that they did before they were out there, um, before they went and served. 
Indeed, the action track opens a door to more of the outdoors for disadvantaged people. The action track chair basically consists of a, of a wheelchair-based setting, and then you have tracks like kind of on a skid loader, uh, where you have independent driving tracks that go around. And the, the benefit of it is, is that they can traverse over a, a variety of different terrains that wheels typically will get stuck in. You control the chair with a with the with the joystick here. Whichever way you move the joystick is the way that the chair is going to go. The nice thing about this chair is it'll actually stand you straight up. Out here it's kind of ideal because then you can shoot in the standing position, you can drive it in the standing position. I tell people the only thing that you can't do on those chairs or you could do wrong is not have fun. But the invention of Action Track began in Marshall, Minnesota for a very sad reason. It really started, I should, I should begin with my son Jeff. Um, in 1998, he had a car accident and became paralyzed. And I was in the motorsports business and you know, trying to figure out how can we help Jeff and others that are in wheelchairs to be able to get outdoors. In 2008, I started bending some metal and doing some fabricating and welding and we, we built our first track chair uh, prototype in, in 2008. And here we are three years later selling hundreds of them. So it's, uh, it's been a good Minnesota project. All right, have fun, guys. There we go, here we go. Ah, gold, darn it. The guys have been uh, great. They're all smiling and they're all having a good time. So I'm glad uh, they could be here and we could be with you guys. I like this chair. <laughs> That I'm the one Coming up, pro dog trainer Jason Dohmeyer shares a few secrets to teach your dog a few manners, such as sit, heel, and come when called. Closed captioning is brought to you by Starkey Hearing Technologies. As we know, dogs are our best friend, right? But what happens when they misbehave? Well, that happens a lot. How to cure it? That's the subject of our next story, making your dog a better behaved one. <laughs> Man's best friend also can be our biggest puzzle. Why is it my dog is deaf when I say sit, stay, or come? Come on, bud. That a boy. Yet when Jason Domeyer speaks, well, dogs listen. Yep, let's go. Come on, get up. Good. People tend to humanize their dogs a little too much. I think a key thing is, you know, keeping your dog being a dog. Okay, you know, they, they look at uh, your family as a pack and they want to figure out where they sit in that pack. Yes, Jason is the leader of the pack here at Cannon River Kennels, a dog training business shared for a dozen years now with partner James Grant. I've known Jason for roughly about, it's been about 14 years total. We even trained pit bulls. I think the key with Jason is his ability, um, you know, to deal with dogs and, and think outside the box. One of the big things with dog training is being able to, there's different ways to get there. You know, there's not just one proven method and his ability to absorb different methods through books and, and other trainers and, and different scenarios and, and just being able to adapt on the move, I think is, is the big thing. Jason got his start training hunting dogs for Oak Ridge Kennels, where Jason met his first television star. I was uh, one of the original trainers of the first Raven that uh, started with Ron. Today, Domeyer trains all breeds, but still specializes in hunting breeds. One of the big training mistakes people make is, is not socializing their dog right. They keep the dog as a puppy at home, not giving a, the dog a chance to, to realize that the world's a lot bigger than those environments. Come on, bud! Hey! It's important to give a lot of positive reinforcement when they come back with the bird. As many different environments you can get a young puppy to, the more the confidence level will uh, will excel later on in life. All right. Hey, bud, come on. Second thing I think people do uh, wrong with at least gun dogs is, is not introducing gunfire properly. We make this a gradual process over two weeks where we start with a uh, blank gun like this, 
go to a 410 shotgun, 20 gauge, 12 gauge, uh, so that we get that noise getting uh, louder and louder and louder. So let's do uh, another one here. I think the third thing that uh, people don't do is they don't gain control early enough. We always let a puppy be a puppy. Hey, that's my boy, the boy. However, you want to train the dog from an early age control with things like leashes, choke chains, check cords. If training a dog looks simple, it is and it isn't. A lot of times these dogs that are older like this and not very well socialized, you can see this dog's nervous, new environment, what's going on? Uh, they're tougher to train because they haven't been exposed to as many things. These young dogs are easy to train. But we want to make sure as we're walking that the dog is walking with us, not walking us. You know what I mean? So getting a dog to be under control where you can enjoy your walk instead of having the dog pull you everywhere. As for heel and sit. Heel, sit. And what I like to do is walk a dog in a figure eight. That way I'm working on both left and right hand turns. The dog's understanding that I'm the one setting the pace. I'm the one deciding which way we go. So here's a command for dog lovers everywhere. Be the leader of the pack. Hey, that a boy, that a boy. Here, come on, buddy. Wait, wait. This week, our Minnesota Bound Classic celebrates the autumn season in Ely, Minnesota. Doorway to the Boundary Waters. Cool fun. That's next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Radco Truck Accessories. The Minnesota Horse and Hunt Club. And by Eggstar Financial Services. You know, if you're thinking of a place to go to celebrate the fall season in Minnesota, number one in my book is a place called Ely, Minnesota. Best known for the Boundary Waters, but you don't have to go into the bush to enjoy the autumn. It's known as the town on the edge of America's first wilderness, Ely, Minnesota, a main street filled with canoe rentals to help you paddle off to fish and camp in Minnesota's vast Boundary Waters canoe area wilderness. But what happens if you and camping and tents is a pain in the sleeping bag? Everyone thinks of the Boundary Waters and uh, they don't realize that just outside of the Boundary Waters, we're sitting here uh, maybe a third of a mile from the Boundary Waters, but yet you still get the cabins. You know, there's full service cabins everywhere along the edge of the Boundary Waters. So it's a uh, wilderness, but with creature comforts. So it's a little bit different than the canoe trips, but for certain people, it's the thing they want to do. And one of the best times to spend nights in a cabin but days in the wilderness is with the advent of autumn. Autumn in the Boundary Waters Wilderness, when bull moose change their habits like the leaves of summer change their color. For an angler, autumn on the outskirts of Ely is a tour of solitude, even on lakes where motorboats are allowed. One of those places is a lake called Basswood. I think Basswood is, 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 is certainly a large lake, but it's also one that has a, has a great reputation for fishing. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think uh, around Ely, there's, uh, there's a lot of places you can go, but Basswood is, is one of those places that has a draw. I think the potential is there to, to catch a really uh, a nice fish. There's uh, some excellent walleye fishing, uh, some great smallmouth bass. Uh, you might catch a lake trout, uh, and you've got a shot at a, at, a, at a nice big northern as well. Hey, oh, northern pike. <laughs> oh, look out. Some of our fishing stories are about big ones. I think I'll just lip him here if I can. While other stories yeah, don't on, always on, have happy easy. endings in the wilderness. Take it easy. Oh, he got off. Those stories. There he goes. Only have lessons about life. How do you like them apples? <laughs> what are you laughing about? Great time up there in Ely. Always a great time any season. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, of course, always star of the show.
Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.